Bharat Forge at its height was among the top three forging companies in the world. The company's journey into the international automotive state started early in the late 90s. Then, to beat the protracted slowdown in the automobile sector in India, it ventured into the US for business. By 2002, it was in Europe and once there, it quickly zoomed ahead through a series of strategic investments and acquisitions that got it more clients and business. By 2007, the company had operations from Michigan in the US to Changchun in China. But that's when things started turning as the global economy went into a tizzy. Kalyani, however, believes that the decision to take the company global was the best thing to have happened. In the year 2000, we were a little Indian company, maybe $100 million in sale, focused largely on the Indian market with a little bit, little bit of exports. Uh, uh, so that's, the, you know, that's where we were, a very inward-looking company. Uh, and then 2008, before the financial crisis came, we were $1.4 billion. We had grown uh, more than 12, 13 times, some of it inorganically, some of it organically. And suddenly we were world leaders in our business uh, with large market shares uh, around the world. And I think this is what people need to understand. Mm -hmm. And many of our people in the government need to understand that Indian companies, Indian businesses, Indian technocrats, Indian entrepreneurs always had this ability mm -hmm. to be able to compete globally, to be able to run international businesses and do a pretty good job. The problem is uh, nobody understood it here at home. And we had to go through this process to prove ourselves. Today, you look at the world and the way the world looks at India, the world looks at India very differently today than the world was looking at India in the year 2000. You have personally had a lot to do with that. You know, you've really been, uh, you know, flying the flag high. My question to you is that, is it ironic that when we are sitting in 2013, we are talking about a recovery in the most, uh, uh, you know, beaten up economies and we are lamenting at the state of affairs in our own economy? Yeah, I think it is, uh, it is a matter of concern. Uh, I don't think we all feel very good about uh, what's happening today. It's a matter of concern. Uh, it's also posed uh, uh, a lot of challenges on Indian business, new challenges. Uh, and the way we are looking at it is, okay, uh, it is what it is. Uh, and, you know, there is, uh, I mean, you can't change uh, what is happening in a country because uh, that's a little bigger, uh, bigger scenario. But it has now given opportunities to many companies like us to reinvent ourselves and move to a, uh, to a different uh, platform, which uh, will see us uh, uh, probably do better things than what we did in the last one decade. While Bharat Forge is looking ahead, it is also course correcting. And in 2012, it announced that it was closing its production facility in the U.S. We had a facility in Lansing, Michigan, uh, one of the highest wage uh, uh, islands in the United States because it's all connected with the automotive industry, the UAW. And uh, for the kind of business we were in making components, nobody was willing to pay you that kind of prices to support that wage structure. So what we have actually done is uh, shut that facility down because it was not economically viable. We have moved half of that production into India and supplying out of India. And we are now actively looking at a, a location in the southern part of the U.S. to set up a much larger facility, to get a much larger footprint in the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we will be in the U.S. as the largest market in the world, and that's going to remain as the largest market in the world. So, we had to do that because, you know, we had to get our... Uh, organization outside India working more efficiently than what it is working. As part of that effort, Bharat Fort also seems to be re-looking at its strategy in China, where the learnings, Kalyani says, have been many. I mean, there are two or three things. First of all, I think uh, China is a very large economy. It's six, seven, eight times larger than India. So, But it's also, you know, China is not one economy. Every province is like a country and operates like a country. So this is, this is one. This is something we didn't realize when we went in. No, we went in looking at China as a country. Second is, uh, I think, 
you know, China is also a country where in this space, automotive, automotive supply space, there is just too much overcapacity. Mm-hmm. Everybody and anybody who, you know, is in this kind of space. Even in the automotive space, there is a lot of overcapacity. So, you will see uh, a big consolidation phase happening in this sector in the next few years. Third, uh, it's very difficult uh, to make uh, reasonable profits, profits or reasonable profits in China. Uh, Very difficult. Would this mean in the future, in that consolidation phase, that you'd want to get out of China or you would want to acquire in new provinces? How are you seeing the science right now? You know, I think I think we have to look at all options, but you cannot ignore the fact that it's a very large market. You cannot ignore the fact that uh, it's a huge economy. Uh, so def- and also we can't ignore the fact that most of our customers today, global customers, are all there and they want us there. Hmm. So that's going to drive your decision to be there or not? There. One form or the other. Let's move to the non-automotive side. Uh, Alstom, you mentioned the JV at Mundra, which has been stuck. Uh, you've had a very big exposure to the locomotive side. You're betting very big on the power energy side. What's the status on all these? I think we have lost three years uh, because nothing is happening <laughs> in this space. But, uh, okay, you know, uh, I'm a little, uh, let's say, frustrated uh, with this. But uh, when I still look at the longer term picture, mm. even the medium term picture, I can't believe that India can operate without uh, its own power equipment manufacturing sector. Uh, India can't operate without adding, uh, you know, 15, 20,000 megawatts of uh, power capacity every year to meet the shortages that we are, uh, we are seeing. So I think uh, we are in the right sectors. Uh, we have had a setback. Uh, the whole whole country has had a setback. Whoever is in in this sector, because of uh, the whole decision making process, uh, you know, having stalled for uh, for three years. I mean, you look at locomotives. Uh, I mean, this is uh, this has been going on for four or five years now. Uh, but it will happen. I mean, uh, I I don't see it not happening. If power and its venture outside the automotive space has been challenging and frustrating, Bharat Ford is already looking at new markets and new businesses. More on where the next big leap will take this company after the short break.